So we are super excited to get going. So we're going live right now with Facebook in the 90 day duplication run. We are super excited. We're on day eight of this third 90 day run. It has been an adventure. Let's say that this year of doing this, it has been a lot, but at the same time, sometimes we, we need pushes, you know, we need to be pushed. And it's one of those things that uh, with goals, like if you reach for something high, even if you don't get it, you're, you would push yourself even further. Right. So for an example, I've heard that, Hey, if I reach to hit a goal of hitting 50,000 in a year, rather than just my normal goal of hitting 10,000, even if we got to 45,000, we got way further than rather than just pushing for the 10,000. Okay. So um, always good to push for big goals, but also remember the gains. And so that's something that we're going to uh, uh, start out with as we're waiting for uh, Sedaria to uh, to join us. And good to see you, Suze, Coach Tanya. Love you. You guys are awesome. Just glad that you're here. So we want to open it up for some some wins. And yes, uh, welcome everybody on, over here on Facebook. We see D, Jeanette. Um, we're super excited. I'm going to I'm going to say Miss Walton because I'm going to try and I'm probably going to butcher, butcher your name. So I apologize. So <laughs> love that you guys are here. So we're going to open up to some wins. So any, any wins that we have going on over here? Please raise your hand. And we will go from there. Benicia says, thanks for the tag. Carlinda. Miss Kim, yes, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, I did have a win. I brought in a new business partner. And um, it's been a while since I've brought in a new business partner. And what I had set up for her was uh, my uh, team has a uh, way to bring a person in and to try to help with duplication. So I went mm. through each step and I found it pretty nice. And I actually said, this is the first person that I've had locally on my team. And so I got a chance to sit there and go through her box with her when it came and just to see how elated she was. And I took photos. And so I'm pretty happy. And I think she is too. Awesome. Love that, Miss Kim. Love that. Love that. I think that's interesting about that onboarding process is we can even practice that with some of maybe some of our old team members that might have like fizzled out a little bit and just say, hey, I have this really cool new process for onboarding people. I don't think I ever did it with you. Do you mind if I just, there's no pressure. I know where you're at with the business, but there's, if, do you mind if I just practice this with you? See what you think, maybe get some feedback, maybe get your opinion on it to see what you think about it, right? And maybe that could help ignite a new spark with them, you know? Maybe see what their goals are, you know, talking about their goals and whatever that process is for you and your team, Miss Kim, but to be able to talk through that with somebody, even get used to it. Because sometimes when you have a list, it's a lot easier to go through rather than just, you know, kind of spitballing it. So um, that's awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, I'm seeing Sedaria on here. Sedaria, are you, ex are you excited? Are you ready to get rocking and rolling with us? I am. I don't, I don't know what happened, but I was on the wrong Zoom, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> You're okay. We're all here. Okay. We're all here. Uh, am I in the wrong place? All righty. Well, thank you so much for being here. If not, I was going to say Josette's going to to help us out over here. So that's what we're going to do. So, or Coach Tanya, we're going to tag team it. So we're going to be all right. <laughs> all right. Well, I am here. Let me get y'all up here so I can see everybody's face. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey. How's everybody today? All right. So. Are y'all hearing me good? Volume up enough? Okay. Yep. Okay. So today was part two of a uh, customer gathering system. He, he started off mentioning that we shouldn't just assume that our uh, new uh, consultants, new team members know what to do. Like, don't, don't, make that assumption and even if you have shown them what to do don't make the assumption that they're doing it because in most cases they aren't he said in most cases well you know he talks about the other uh direct companies that are like product-based you know supplements and skincare and all that he's like you know most of the time you assume that they're using the product but what if they aren't so have a system in place so that you can stay in 
uh, contact with your with your business partners, with your consultants, and know kind of where they are, what they're doing, if they're having struggles. So just staying connected with them really is um, the point of that. So not just making assumptions that they're doing certain things, even those things that you've shown them what to do and how to do it. So he mentioned that he gave us a list of tools and resources to create um, a system with. And and thinking of these in, in third parties as third party um way in a third party way so the first one he gave um and the reason we need these tools it will be to give a new person a better chance at gaining new customers and we know that that's where our business is based on customers like we need sales we need customers to have sales to be able to survive on sales be able to hit our LOPs through sales not not buying I'm working on it I'm working on it okay transparent moment there okay so the first one he mentioned was a video or links uh we know that we do have access to different resources uh even the frank especially frank divas page has a lot of resources we can use videos uh links to forms that we can use lop trackers uh some of your direct team pages may also have some of this information but frank divas has it uh United Fashionistas that she I, Andrea has a lot of uh resources there that she allows all consultants to use. She also there is a website she she has too where she has a lot of like her uh forms and her sheets and her DMOs. I for, I forget the name of it, but there's a website that you can go to that any consultant can use and you know and, and use those forms and resources that she has there so those tools you have the links the tools to videos and what you want to do with that is to educate them on the product but for us we know they already know is the jewelry <laughs> so we want to educate them more on the benefit of the business opportunity the team building uh motivating them inspiring them we can use emp uh we can use an event to motivate them emp is a good one to use because it's not expensive and um it's something that they can go to and kind of and get a feel for what is going on in the business get some um, encouragement get some motivation and that's even before they start the business you can always take as many guests as you want to emp and convention it's just convention is a, a little bit pricier um <laughs> uh event to do but emp is a perfect one to use he mentioned websites uh, websites that will build credibility of your product, insight, testimonies. Uh, we have a lot of those. We have many videos that uh, ones have put up that tells their story, tells how the business changed their life, uh, took them from basically rags to riches in a lot of cases, homelessness to being able to take care of themselves and their children and their and, and you know and their extended families in some cases. We have social media. He mentioned our um, ATM system to add, tag, and message. For us, we can definitely use our groups for this. So he said, have creating a group that is all about your product. For us, it will be all about the jewelry. That could be a VIP group if you want to use your VIP group that way. Uh, typically, he said they are private. So you invite a person in, you know, you add them as a friend then you invite them and tag them in the group then you message them so what you want to happen in this particular group he mentioned was them seeing how for us it will be how the business has impacted different people's lives i also think it's um allowing customers to see other customers enjoying their jewelry that they purchased so having that that group set up so that people can see you know uh, what your customers are saying about you, um, what they're saying about the jewelry, how much they enjoy the jewelry, the quality of the jewelry, all those things can be part of your testimony or credibility as far as the jewelry itself. And then seeing that people are buying it, it is it's not a saturated market, they are buying it. And uh, 
then the testimonies is those that are actually doing the business of having them leave a testimony. It could be your team. It could be other team members from your sideline, your upline, your downline. It doesn't matter if you have a video that you've seen that you like, that you uh, enjoy or admire their story and feels like their story could work um, to encourage someone else to join the business. Just if you know the person, ask them, is it okay if you put it in your group? Uh, those are, uh, uh, one he, what he about for social media sampling? Can I uh, go ahead? Try, uh, join something in, mm -hmm. you guys. We we have uh, Severia gave a great idea with having a VIP group, which is more focused on you and your customers. If you have, if you want a group that it's created that we've created for you, that's more of like uh, what's the right word that anybody and everybody can use. It's not focused on us. I mean, it's it's everybody and anybody. It's called How to Become a Paparazzi Consultant. So I could put it in here. And it's where we do, if you guys know of our customer appreciation night, that group is set up for this purpose. Yep. So we've got posts in there about like frequently asked questions about like the jewelry, about like if you have to have a, uh, you know, a minimum. Like we've got frequently asked questions. We've got testimonial videos in there. Um, and that's a great, uh, great resource for you guys that if you don't have a VIP group like Sidaria, I mean, that's a great idea for you guys to be able to use and for your team members to use as well. Okay. I'll, I'll post that in the chat and over on Facebook, but okay. perfect. Thanks, Sidaria. Okay. Thank you. So the next one is sampling. Uh, for us, that will be our gift bags or as some call them, their blessing bags where you're giving uh, a piece of uh, to someone as a gift, heart, you know, a piece of two. You can use your hostess rewards. You can use blockbusters. Blockbusters are great to use that in that way because if someone else sees it and wants it, you can always get more of the blockbuster. So the blockbusters, and then when you're using that, that's marketing tax write off. <laughs> so all those things, even though it is an item that you that you're paying for up front, as opposed to our hostess rewards you know, we're getting those as complimentary items. Either either one that you use, just be sure to include your business card so that they can get back in contact with you. Um, that builds confidence in the product. They get a chance to wear it, make sure it doesn't break them out. Some people are very sensitive. Uh, if, they, if you come across that, you can definitely always offer, well, hey, I'd like for you to just try it and let me know how it did for you. And when they come back and say, I was able to wear it without breaking out. What is that? A testimony, credibility to the product, how it does um, on the skin. And especially for those who are highly sensitive to certain elements and metals. So add that to your group, to that group, have that person make a quick little video on how the product did for them, even though they have very sensitive skin. The next one was challenges, Chall challenges. So this is what I wrote for this one. Um, for, for us, building new customers. When you do the challenges like the 10, 10, 10, for 10 days, you show 10 pieces for 10 minutes live, or even if you do it in a flash sale setting, or 15, 15, 15, you know, then you have something to do the 30 day challenges or the seven day challenges where you have a different theme each week or a different theme the whole month. What those do that I found, uh, it shows you being consistently showing up on Facebook and then you start to see, oh, hey, I'm starting to see some new names pop up, new people popping in. I've been doing it. I did it. Pretty much every day last month, I went live. Uh, I didn't write the exact numbers down, but even with doing that, I have seen the increase in people popping in on my lives. Now, what I've been doing the last week is going at the same time, which I am a night owl. So I am typically, <laughs> you can typically find me <laughs> on between the hours of nine and one in the morning. <laughs> It's, you know, it just depends how the day went or whatever. So I found though that even even that at that time, if I go on around that same time, what happens? People know, oh, that lady gonna be on again tonight. <laughs> that jury lady I saw tonight. 
And so they start scrolling. And then when they get the scroll, because I, I was like, well, hey, how did you find me? Oh, just scrolling. So when you're consistent at the same time and you have those other night owls that are up or whatever you may have, you may be an early bird. Pick an early time to come on and you will pro- you'll be amazed at the amount of people that you get that start to come on and join you. You have a question, um, Kim? Yes. Could you tell me, do you ever find a difference between the number of people that you might have come to your live, whether your profile on Facebook is a personal or a business uh, entrepreneur or um, creator profile? Um, I, I, transparent moment, I, I'm not a statistic person like that, so I don't really look at it. I know I should, I know I should. <laughs> I know, it, it, you know, learn, do, review. <laughs> I know that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Hmm, but I don't. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I was just wondering because uh, probably, probably one thing that I'm, that's one thing that I'm having a problem with is that I see people they keep telling me you need a professional profile, and then when I go in the background to get it, it's not available to me. And I've been writing Facebook, and so I was just like, well, I'm just going. Oh, keep okay. It. Oh, you mean to put your personal page in in, in professional mode? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's just one of those things. It's different from uh you, the thing about it is when you are in professional mode, you have other uh tools that they give you that you are able to use, like you can schedule your post and um just other little differences that are there between a uh, just normal personal page and if you make your page your personal page a professional. Okay, Zakia, Zakia, Zakia. The key Can I add something really quick to that, Sidaria? Uh-huh. Something to think about for all of you guys is the Facebook algorithm can work for us and against us. Mm-hmm. So even though we go live, it doesn't mean that everybody will know that we're going live. Uh-huh. So even thinking about some sort of notification system, like why, why do people have your email? Why do people have your text message? Because they can control that and that's your list, they call it. So thinking about something that you can control, because when you have a text message and they opt into it, you can send that out whenever, like as much as they give you permission. Right. But like Facebook, you're kind of like at their will and their mercy. Be like, okay, well, hopefully that all my followers like will get notified. And there's algorithm that if you don't, if you don't message with with them within 24 hours, they won't get notified. So that's a lot of work, 24 hours with your people. So think about some sort of easy notification system, whether that's messaging your people, whether that's a text messaging system, whether that's, I would try and find something as cheap as possible, obviously, because some of those things can get a little pricey, but an email system, you know, letting people know that, I mean, we're working on, we've done in the past where we send out a text message every single time we've gone live, you know, because we can control that. Uh So a thing to think about. Okay, okay. I was just wondering if anybody saw that whether that made a difference for them as far as getting new eyes on your live or if it just really matters on your consistency. Yeah, and I I mean, the two modes, I, I'm going to be honest with Sideria as well as I don't know. So I would maybe do your own research and maybe maybe see if you can find something out there to kind of help us out. Maybe you can come back and help, let us know. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rob, mm-hmm. Robbie. Oh. Can you hear me? I'm on my headphones. So I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you're in professional mode, that's when you can cross post. You can't cross post on your live. Did someone already say that? You can't cross post if you're not in professional mode from your business page. Uh, can, can you give us a little background with those that don't know what cross posting is, Suze? So when you go live on your business page, this is just barely rolled out in the last like month is that you go live on your business page before you push that live button, you can click the little three dots and you can cross, it says cross posting and you can link that to your professional personal page. So then you're going live in two places at once and that has helped my business tremendously. Awesome. Cause now there's two ways for people to find you. And then I funnel them into my business page. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, Great idea, so you have to be in professional mode. So that's why it's good to go into professional mode there. Mm. Okay. Awesome. There you go. Right there. Sorry. Thank okay. you, Suze. No, that's perfect. Oh, that's that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Right. Zakaya, can I can I finish the last couple of ones and then we'll get your question?
Yes. You we can't I can't hear you. Your sound isn't isn't on isn't in. Yeah, we can't hear you. As you're maybe as you as you test that out, if you go to the bottom left of your screen or whatever, if you you can test your speakers to see if you can test that out while uh Sidaria kind of helps you uh finishes up. How does that sound? Okay. I just have like three three more. So the next one was demonstrations. Um uh, And he didn't really go into a lot of detail about that. I, I, I mean, just, I guess, demonstrations of how the business works. Um, yeah, I don't have, all I have is demonstrations. I seem, feel like, seem like he just kind of moved quickly through um, on from demonstrations. I didn't get anything specific that he said about that. But stories is where he gave, but is something that will apply to us more so. And the last one he gave was science. If there are any scientific facts um, that you can use, then you want to use use that. Uh, if there are any reports or and everything, and for us, we do have that uh, report about the lead, nickel, and you know those being FDA compliant or approved. So that's the only thing that I thought about for the scientific um, info. Now for stories, he gave three layers to it. You can use yours and other people's. Now, using your own stories as you tell your story, make sure it's compliant. Um, tell where you where where how, where you started and where you are now with our business opportunity. That will mostly be what it what the part of the story we will be sharing. Uh, the feeling it gave us, how it improved our confidence, uh, our um, shyness. You know, the introvert those things those things you want to share in your story second was when you tell other people's story so he said you want to collect stories from team members um you know your downline upline sideline if you don't have your own story yet together you can use someone else's story until you get yours where you want it um to the point to you know where it can be shared and you can duplicate it and use it over and over Third way, what he said, which goes into what I just said about creating your own story, says create a 30-day story. So he was saying it in reference to those uh, sales of products and supplements, things that you use every single day. But for us, we still can make that 30-day story of, okay, so I got my kit this day and just make it uh, start recording what we sold, how we sold it. And those things for you within that first 30 days of you be getting that kit and, and actually starting, you know, after your launch. So you can still create your own 30 day story with your sales, you know, how you met new people, how you introduced your business to others and do that for the 30 days. And then you'll have your own 30 day story of how the business changed you within your first 30 days. It don't have to be your first 30 days, but just make a 30 day story. Even if you start now, because I don't have one, but even if you start now, just do a 30 day period of <laughs> where you started and where you ended at the end of the month and use that. And those were pretty much the things that was that was it. And he said, well, of course, as leaders, our goal is always to get our team members to do a little bit more than they would have done without us. So find where they are in their level of fear. And then give them a system to still help them gain results um, for that. And let's say that just, and so tomorrow he's going to talk about how the process of the systems and how we use this, the process of how we can use the system and tools to get results. That's tomorrow's lesson. Um, if you weren't here yesterday, our, the first part was uh, to Figure out what is working in your organization, in your business, or other within the organization that you've seen. Is it a system? If it's not, can you systemize it? And then how you can strengthen that system. So that was the first part, if y'all missed that from yesterday. Okay, Zakai.
You're still muted. How about now? Okay, we hear you now. Perfect. Okay. Hey, you said my name right the first time. It's Sakia. Sakia, okay. Um, in regards to what Miss Kim was saying, um, I don't have like a like my personal Facebook page. I don't have it to like professional. I just have a, a business page. Um, and I just named it Divine Shine. But what I do notice is that more people are kind of like curious about it because I'll share it to my page. So instead of people being like, oh, well, Zakia, what are you selling? Uh, what are you into now? They'll just see like, oh, she's sharing something. Let me go and look at it. So it's almost like they, you know, they're, they're more curious about it versus like, you know, hey, look at me. I'm sorry. I, I just went, just went live. So it's like, hey, look at me. I got this, you know, I have this. So there's something to me saying, hey, I have it because then they'll already be like, okay, well, well Zakia, what do you have? Now they're like, oh, well, Zakia, you're actually in, in, uh, you're in something, you're doing well. Um, and it brings in people that I don't know. Cause mm -hmm. actually what I, like, I've just been doing this for five months now. Um, and really doing lives for about four months. So I have like my start in five that I can really count on jumping on the lives. None of them are people that know me. Mm -hmm. Now that I have those start in five and I'm sharing that to my personal page, then I'm getting people that I, you know, I grew up with from back home. And I think that's another thing because I'm, I'm not in the area that I grew up in. They're like, oh yeah, let me, let me try this. Let me, let me buy something from you. So I think that makes a, the, you know, to answer Ms. Kim's question in my standpoint, um, that's how it's worked for me. It could be different if I still lived in the place where I was born and raised, because then of course they may be like, oh, okay, well, let me buy this. But I'm not, I'm 700 miles away from where I was born and raised. So they're just going to be looking like, what are you, what are you, what are you into now? You know, I thought you were a nurse. So why are you trying to sell this jewelry? That's, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the mindset. And I can have my story and going back to where you're saying, use your story. Um, my story right now is more so for um, people that don't know me. So yeah. that's all. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we're super close to time because new releases are, are, are about to drop in two minutes. Thank you so much for your comment. I appreciate that. Uh, just to wrap things up really quick. Thank you so much. Sedaria will be on tomorrow. One thing to think about a part of this, you guys, is when you send this out, think about this, just like in, in the Bible, I love correlating things back to the Bible is out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, you shall know my word. Okay. So by these, these third party tools, just help you give an extra little bit of evidence to the people that you're, you're sending this to like customers, try and also find a, a follow-up system. Like if you send something to them, find a way to follow up with them. Because if you're relying on them to follow up with you, it tends to not happen. So you got to take the initiative. And a system is not a system, Eric Worre says, unless it works, people know about it and people use it, a part of your team, okay? So we're going to follow up with that. Um, Sedaria did an awesome job going through the seven different things of third-party tools. We're going to post that up here in the description, but we're going to get off real quick for, for new releases. We love you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll talk later. Yeah, tomorrow. Bye. Love yeah. you. Bye-bye. Bye, W. -bye. Bye, w.